Hello everyone, my name is Phan Ngoc Thien and welcome to my blog. This is a travel blog detailing all my wonderful and memorable experiences in the central Vietnam and central highlands. So without further ado, let's begin. It was about 5 in the morning and my class was gathering up to head to the bus to get ready for departure. This marked the beginning of my second field trip and possibly one of the most unforgettable trips of my life. For day one, there wasn't really much to do. The journey from Ho Chi Minh City to Nha Trang City was quite far, so most of the time I was on the bus looking at the road. However, the moment we reached Nha Trang City was when the fun began as it was time for team building. Everybody was having the time of their lives, playing to their heart's content. We were so loud that it attracted the attention of a lot of onlookers. Unfortunately, our class plays last, but hey, we all had fun, so who really care? Get him, get him! On day two, the first destination for the day was Hong Kong. I first watched a classical music performance and it was awesome. I was astonished at their wonderful performance. After that, I walked around and admired the beauty that is Hong Kong. A unique work created by Mother Nature, Hong Kong is a rocky beach located on the coast of Nha Trang with a special shape. Rocks cluster together and over time, the large rocks are eroded and weathered by the sea waves and wind, creating a magnificent beauty. I especially like how the local people explain the special shape of this rock through the story of a fishing couple. The next destination was Elza, also known as Wind Strait. This is a unique place as it is where the mountains and the sea converge. The wind is extremely strong making for a cool and pleasant atmosphere. It really was a unique experience to sit at the top admiring the scenery below. I highly recommend everyone who comes to Elza to try it yourselves. The first destination for day 3 was Nong Nuk Stone Carving Village. Here, I saw a lot of cool and intricate stone statues. I was actually amazed at the fact that these stones were made by human hands as they were so detailed and lifelike. I was planning to buy some but when I looked at the price, I just gave up. It was time to explore Ngũ Hàn Sơn or Marble Mountains the most visit destination in Da Nang. A little fun fact about the place is that although the Ngũ in its name means five, it is actually a collection of six mountains. What the five represents is the five elements, metal, wood, water, fire, and earth. Marble Mountains is a gathering of all the beauties of nature and spirituality it is famous for many of its pagodas. In fact, after climbing the rugged stairs, we can find Lin Ng Ngũ Hành Sơn Pagoda, an ancient temple nearly 200 years old located on Huy Sơn Mountain. The pagoda was built by Emperor Minh Mạng for his daughter Princess Ngọc Lan when she came to Marble Mountains to practice Buddhism in Tang Chung Cave. This has now become a favorite destination for tourists coming here. Another sight to behold would definitely be Huynh Kong Cave. During the war against French colonialism, this cave used to be a secret base for local communist leaders and guerrillas. Now, it is one of the most impressive caves that you can find on earth. Entering the cave, you are greeted by all kinds of statues and sculptures with the biggest statue, Sakyamuni, placed right on the opposite side of the entrance. I was simply astonished at the grandiose scenery of nature before my eyes throughout the whole journey. It really is an experience that you have to see to believe. At 
night, I was lucky to witness the fire and water performance of the Dragon Bridge. It was spectacular. In the morning, we were taken on a tour of the four-star Royal Lotus Hotel. It was fun to see all kinds of services and amenities that a four-star hotel can offer, as well as how it functions and operates. In the afternoon, it was time to visit another must-visit destination in Da Nang, Hoi An Ancient Town. Recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1993, Hoi An Ancient Town is a unique blend of Japanese, Chinese, and French architecture, making it one of the most distinct destinations in Vietnam. We visited three places while we were in Hoi An Ancient Town. The first was the Guangdong Assembly Hall. It was originally built in the Guangdong Guangzhou region in 1885 then transported by both to Hoi An and assembled all together. It's a closed campus with a three-door gate entrance, a large garden with bonsai trees, a communal temple, a main hall, and a backyard, a common feature found in every assembly hall in Hoi An. The second was Duc An Ancient House, one of the most famous buildings in Hoi An. The name of this historic building Duke Ang can be translated as keeping morals to live at peace. This ancient house has had a lifespan of more than 180 years, spanning six generations. It has an oriental design style and holds a lot of profound historical significance, and every year it is restored to preserve the intact beauty of the old times. The third was the Temple Bridge. Unfortunately, it was under construction so there wasn't much to do. At night is when Hoi An ancient town is the liveliest. So I was delighted to have witnessed for myself the beauty that is Hoi An. For day 5, we just rode on the bus all day till we got to Tuy Hoa City. Though I got to try a local specialty here, uh, so good, so good, so good. it was extremely delicious uh, and I highly right, right, recommend right, right. it. We made our way to the first destination of the day, Stone Church, or its official name, Christ the King Cathedral. If Saigon has the famous Notre Dame Cathedral, then in Nha Trang, we have the Stone Church, the pride of all Catholics in Nha Trang. Built in 1933, it was designed in a provincial French Gothic style by priest Louis Vallette during the early 19th century. Walking around, I saw a lot of statues depicting respectable Catholic figures, and I thought it was pretty neat. Next was the Nha Trang Institute of Oceanography. Founded in 1922, it is one of the earliest scientific research institutions in Vietnam and is considered to be the largest marine artifact and research facility in Southeast Asia. It houses more than 20,000 specimens representing 4,000 different marine species it was like I was walking through an aquarium, so I thoroughly enjoyed my stay there. On the seventh day, we first arrived at the King Palace. This palace is associated with the name of the last feudal emperor in Vietnam, the last emperor of Nguyen dynasty, Bảo Đại. His statue can be seen in the center of the campus at the entrance of the palace. This palace houses many items and amenities about him and his activities when he was alive. It was interesting to see the legacy of the last king of Vietnam, even if he was just a figurehead. After that was the Dalak Railway Station. It was designed by French architects in 1932 and was designated a National Architectural Monument in December 2001. It is no longer used for transportation but as a tourist destination. 
there is a chocolate store to the left of the station where you can taste chocolate for free. I tried all of the flavors and it was extremely delicious, although the price is a bit high. Next was the Domaine de Maria Church. It was built using antique French architectural style featuring complex building consisting of a church building and two rows of monasteries. I thought it was quite funny how the church really lives up to its name as the Cherry Church, with pink being everywhere. In the afternoon, we made our way to Lang Biang, one of the highest mountains in Da Lạt, and often regarded as the roof of Da Lạt. You have to ride a jeep to get to the top, and it was truly one unique experience, I can tell you that. At the top, you can see the spectacular nature and marvelous view of the whole Dalek city. To end the day, we have the Gong Culture Exchange. It was undoubtedly the highlight of the trip for me and many others. It was the best moment of my year as a university student and probably still will be in the future. I'm really glad that I got to experience this wondrous moment. to Dalek Night Market and was luckily able to make some new friends who were willing to share their feelings about Dalek and Vietnam. Thank you. What? Uh, yes. was uh, welcome everyone to uh, my interview for my group, oh no, well, for my project. And uh, this gentleman right here will be my interviewee. So I'm going to ask him some questions. So. Uh, could you introduce a little bit about yourself and why have you come to Vietnam and specifically Da Lạt? Um, I'm called Nathan. I'm from England. I'm solo traveling oh. Vietnam. Oh. Why are you solo traveling? Uh, why are you solo traveling? Because it's, it's fun, isn't it? It's fun. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, don't, don't you uh, want to travel with friends? No, it's better by yourself, man. Oh. And uh, while you have been in Dalai, have you had any memorable experiences? I've only arrived today. Oh, did I? Yeah. Yes, this interview right here? Yeah. And uh, now, wait, wait, how long have you been in Dalai? Just, just one day today. One day. Oh, have have you, uh, where have you been? Uh, Ho Chi Minh. Uh, Hanoi. 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 No, in the tram. On the tram, the tram. And then the lot. Have you tried any uh, delicacy here? Yeah, four. And uh, how how would you rate Vietnam and uh, would you recommend uh, everybody else to visit? Yes, I'd highly recommend it. Oh. Good. Thank yeah. you, thank you very much. Thank you, yes. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Uh, this is my second interview and uh, 
can I ask you some questions? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, why have you come to the lab? Uh, so my name is Michael. I am from America. Uh, I'm visiting Vietnam for a month, and you know, going from Ho Chi Minh all the way to Hanoi. I heard that the lot was a great sleepy town. Right? Also, it was a town you go when you get your heart broken. So that's what someone said. So uh, got my heart broken, so I'm here. I'm here. So well, it's very peaceful, really nice. So. Uh, I I do. <laughs> so uh, wait. You said that you uh, need to uh, stay here for like uh, a month? Um, so, yeah, a month. Oh. So, maybe maybe longer. So, I really like Vietnam. Oh. So, it's a lot better than the U.S. So, oh. a lot better. Uh, people, the Vietnamese people are very nice, very friendly. There's a lot of community. So, but America is like, eh. Um, definitely. Um, I mean, I've only been here for five days, um, but just coming over, just the sense of community is really memorable, right? Because in America, everyone is very, like, in their own home, like, people aren't hanging out in the streets, uh, but the street food, um, I just like that everything's easy to get around, motorbike, so, in America, everyone owns a car, right? And it's, you know, very wasteful, very expensive, so, but it's nice to just use grab and uh, just Ho Chi Minh, so, and then this is my second place, but then I'm going to go Hoi An, uh, Da Nang, uh, then Hanoi, so, are there any other places you recommend? Uh, when you come to Hoi An, definitely go to Foco Hoi An, yes, that place is like a historical heritage, right. and, and uh, when you come to uh, Da Nang, uh, no, no. Uh, you have to definitely uh, go see the uh, bridge on the dragon bridge. The dragon bridge. Okay. Uh, if you find uh, around uh, nine or ten, you can ask the local. I I do not. And definitely eat uh, one noodle. Oh, definitely. Well, the food's great. Bow everywhere. Bow every day. So, but, uh, awesome. Uh, so, uh, would you uh, recommend everyone to visit Oh, uh, definitely. Definitely. A thousand percent. Okay. So, especially anyone in America. So, like, I'm, I'm not living in America. I'm dying in America. So, oh. But, uh, awesome. Yes, thank you very Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank so, you too. It was already the last day of the trip and I would be lying if I wasn't a bit sad. The first and also the last destination of the day was Trup Lam Zen Monastery. Located on the majestic Phung Hoang Mountain and directly facing the Tuyng Lam Lake, it is designed using unique Buddhist architecture. I didn't have a lot of energy left after last night so I just sat down and rested. Watching the flowers feeling the wind, it really brought me a tranquil feeling and helped me regain a feeling of inner peace. And that was the end of the trip. It was truly one of the most memorable trips I have ever had in my life. I am thankful to my classmates, my teachers and everyone at Saigon University who have given me these precious memories. And I hope that everyone who watched this vlog can feel the same feelings as I do. This is Thay, signing out.